Hey guys, this is Mr. Nightmare here, and today we'll be reading The Darkness Chapter 3. Before we get started, please hit that like button and comment to subscribe to this channel if you guys want more creepypasta fan fictions out there. Until then, let's get started. I really wish I didn't do it. What I did, I stabbed Lucinda again for a second time. I had no choice. I knew if she... If she caught on to anything or something would happen. I picked her up and brought her back into her house, making sure not to make a sound. Setting her on her bed, I looked at her, having the pain in my chest, quickly realizing that this feeling, my heart was beating. I only ever got this feeling when I looked at Lucinda. Her beautiful sapphire eyes, her beautiful long black hair. I can't see myself falling for this mortal, though. It's impossible. Shaking my head and taking one last glance at Lucinda before leaving her house and going back into the mansion. Hey, Jack. I sighed in annoyance, hearing that familiar, annoying voice. Great. Toby. I turned around and faced Toby. What do you want? I said pissed off. He laughed. I want to know why were you at Mortal's house, Jack? Toby's voice changed from a very memo into a very deep monotone. Then I noticed it wasn't Toby, but slender. Lucinda's point of view. Ugh. Did I hit my head or did I black out or something? I opened my eyes to see that I was in my own bedroom. I sighed. Must have been a dream. I slowly got up from the pain in my side, seeing a cut, my eyes widened in shock. No, this can't be. I looked at the cut and then I see blood seeping out as it was fresh. There is no exception for that. It was a work of eyeless Jack. I quickly went to the restroom and bandaged myself up. Then I looked up and screamed at who I saw behind me. A very pale black ram eyes with unusual or unnatural smile. Go to sleep. A guy rushed with his bloody knife, cocking his head to the side. I ran downstairs and almost was almost grabbed by the guy that caught me and tackled me to the ground. Raising his knife, ready to stab me, I closed my eyes tightly, waiting for, no for it, but nothing happened. I opened my eyes to see, n no longer seeing the person there anymore. What? Where is that person? Just there, I yelled as tears streamed down my face. I slowly got up and turned around to see my parents' dead bodies. Blood was everywhere. I called 911. Hello, this is 911. Do you have a problem? The voice said. I cried harder. Yes, please. My parents are dead. Someone killed them. I told from my side. Please calm down and tell us what has happened. I don't know. I just got home and someone, a guy attacked me, almost killing me. I know he's the killer who killed my parents. Please, madam, calm down and tell us where you live. That we'll be there soon as possible. I suck in a sh sharp breath. I live in 304 Esther Avenue. I hung up and sat on the floor, having feeling that I'd die by the time they get here. I could hear laughing. Someone was laughing like a madman. Once they got to my house and I'd been picked off by the madness, the door swung open. They found me and my parents' dead bodies. They looked at them. And I felt myself slowly fade. I looked at my dead parents. I am sorry. 
Mom and Dad. Time skip one month later. Everything is is exactly the same before, except that my parents are dead. But I'm living my life as nothing has ever happened. My parents' loss affect me sometimes, but hardly their deaths really never affected me in that way. I was walking to my new friend, Tim. He acted like an older brother to me, but I knew there was something that he wasn't telling me, but I didn't want to know or didn't know exactly what it is hurting me, who he kept something from me. I didn't push the subject, and I didn't want him to think I was being nosy or an asshole, but I wasn't. I mean, I've been nosy to a certain extent. It wasn't like other people I knew. Lucinda, I snapped my head into reality to look at Tim. Did you hear anything I said? Tim looked at me, and I shook my head, and he laughed. That's what I thought. I was wondering if you want to come camping with me tomorrow. He smiled. Sure, that sounds like fun. I got nothing better to do. I sighed. Tim gave me a reassuring smile. Meet me tomorrow. Tim, re- as I ran off to my house, taking a shortcut through the woods, like everything, like every day, I kind of felt safe there, but at the same time, not. The crunching of leaves or twig snapping or footsteps that I could hear behind me, I slowly turned around to see my worst nightmare. Hey guys, this is Mr. Nightmare here, and I'm making this quick announcement in the end of this video. It's most likely to show you that me and my sister are now selling creepypasta t-shirts. I'll leave the link to the t-shirt. Sadly, there's only one design on the website in the description box below. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'm sorry if I sound like I'm whispering. I'm recording in my uncle's house and my cousin's sleeping next door. So, yeah. Anyway, I just hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!